All right, we're going to look at building absolute value inequalities from word problems. And we'll start with a Starbucks, Starbucks problem. So it says Starbucks grand uh, cups have an average diameter of 3.57 inches. The lids that are used must be within 0.07 inches of the average width to be secured to the rim of the cup properly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start by drawing a number line so we can make sense of this problem. Um, so when we draw the number line, what I'm going to do is just a real general one and smack dab in the middle, I am going to go ahead and put the average, which is 3.57 inches. Okay. Um, from there, what we know from 3.57, we know that we can go ahead and step up 0.07 steps above to make a lid work. And that would bring us to 3.64. But we also know since it's within it and it doesn't tell us that it's gonna be at 0.07 above, it can also be 0.07 below. So 0.07, this is like a margin of error. So I'm gonna come down here and say, okay, that must be at 3.5. So in reality, if we were to say L equals the lid diameter, we can actually already come up with our um, domain for this pretty easily. We can pretty much say that the lid length has got to be between 3.5 and 3.64. So I can actually write that down as saying 3.5 is less than or equal to L is less than or equal to 3.64. We can also write this in interval notation if we wanted to, because we have these equals, we'd use our brackets. So we'd say 3.5 comma 3.64. Nice and easy, we've already made the domain of answers for this, but let's go ahead and understand how the inequality statement comes to be. We have to remember that when we're talking about absolute value, the absolute value is indicating that it wants to tell us or give us information about steps from the axis of symmetry. Okay, and the steps from that axis of symmetry in this case is really from the average. Okay, and we know that those steps are going to be 0.07. And we use the absolute value because it allows us to say the number of steps above, but it also allows us to say the number of steps below. So if we start thinking about it, I'm going to set up our absolute value. The number of steps that it's going to be that we're allowed is 0.07. Now we are allowed to have 0 0.06, 0 0.05 steps below, I mean above, or 0.03, but we are not allowed to go any bigger. So if we go any bigger, that's, that's not going to work. So we know we can go equal to 0 0.07. We know that we can go less than 0 0.07. Now the question is, is what in the world do we put in here? Well, this is going to be our testing area. Okay. So what I mean by that is simple. If I was to take, for example, the number 3.65, okay, 3.65. Let's say we had a lid that was 3.65. Would that work? Well, we know it wouldn't work. It's bigger than 3.64, but how would we test it? We'd simply test it by saying 3.65 minus 3.57, and we would subtract to see if it gives us that 0.07, but in reality, what that'll give us is 0.08, and that will not work. Well, what did we do? We took a random lid and we subtracted the 3.57. All right, and that's how we build that. So remember, we're looking, uh, absolute value looks for the steps. And then from there, we're gonna subtract off the average from any lid to see if it fits within that. That's our test. Um, let's go ahead and just check our work on Desmos. So checking our work on Desmos is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give each one of these pieces a name. So I'm going to call this one uh, G of X, and you'll see why I do this in just a second. This is G of X, and let's call this one F of X. Uh, it just helps us with Desmos. Okay? So I'm going to type in G of X equals to the absolute value of X minus 3.57. Now remember, I'm using Desmos. It doesn't like all the letters, so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that I put an X in there. Um, I name the other one f of x. So I'm going to come over here and say f of x equals to 0 0.07. Okay, we can actually see the intersections 3.5 and 3.64. And if we follow the format with g of x and f of x, I can actually just move this statement here less than or equal to, and I can type that in. 
So I'm going to come in and say g of x is less than or equal to f of x. And guess what it does? It shades it for us. So as we're graphing this, we can just go ahead and say, hey, check it out. There is our solution set from 3.5 to 3.64, and it is shaded. Okay. And what that does is that just verifies the work that we did earlier. Um, so I hope that helps out. Uh, I hope Desmos helped you very, uh, uh, validate that. And I hope that the explanation for the absolute value works out for you.